All right, all right, all right, people, it is time. For those of y'all who are coming in, welcome to Pittsburgh PodCon. Yeah. Like I said, we are streaming live. We are streaming live right now on Sorgatron Media. And for those who are watching us on Facebook Live, hey, if you want to come out to the show, we're located right here at Spirit Hall. That's right, at Spirit, 242 51st Street in Lawrenceville, all right? So come on now, man. We're having a good time. We got tables everywhere. We're, it, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's up, man? Ian Insect, that's my dude, man. All right, it is now time for the International Podcast Day. Why we podcast, basically. It is a discussion panel. And what we have right here is the man who's going to be discussing it during the, during the discussion panel, my good friend. That's right, that's what I said. I said it, my good friend, my co-host of River Talk, and the owner of River's Edge Radio Network. Y'all give it up for Mr. Brian Crawford. All right, hello, Pittsburgh. Welcome to Spirit Hall. Hello to the world, and welcome to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am Brian Crawford. This is Reasons to Podcast, a discussion panel for International Podcast Day. We're recording live at Spirit Hall in Lawrenceville, a neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we are here to talk about why we podcast. A big shout out to the, 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 to the sponsors of International Podcast Day, Blueberry, Repurpose.io, Podcast Success Academy, and of course, a big shout out to our local sponsor right here, Sidekick Media Services. Let Sidekick Media be the sidekick to your superhero project. Our goal is to make your project stand apart while we offer expertise and guidance from our knowledgeable team. At the end of the day, it's about the client's vision and what they're trying to accomplish. It's still your project. We just offer the support and the resources to get it where you want it. Learn more at SidekickMediaServices.com. As I said, I am Brian Crawford. I am with the River's Edge Radio Network. It's Pittsburgh's voice for local music, a 24-hour streaming service of local original music here in Pittsburgh, as well as some fantastic podcasts that are original to the Pittsburgh area as well. Podcasts like the Mike Sasson Show, the first guest here on the discussion panel. Mike, welcome to the welcome to the world. Welcome to the International Podcast Day discussion panel and to Pittsburgh PodCon right here in Pittsburgh. Everything in my life has led to this. Hold on, you're off. Everything. I'm off. You're off. I'm no, off. but failed. Screw it up. Just said See, that's why we needed to have an initial time. We should have practiced this entire panel a couple times before we even tried it. Make sure yours is on. What I said was everything was leading up to this moment and the microphone wasn't on. So, so would, would this have happened in terrestrial radio? Absolutely not. They're absolutely perfect not. in every way. No, in I'm kidding. Way. They're dinosaurs. They're lumbering dinosaurs. They're all going bankrupt and I can't wait to pick on the juicy morsels of meat left when they are all gone and podcasting rules the world. Thank you, God bless America. Well, Michael Sasson, fantastic host on the River's Edge. You can hear him every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. We also have Camilla, Ad Camilla Adams right here to Mike's right. Hello. Welcome. You Hello. are with the Rugged Angel cast. Yes. <laughs> and when does your show come out? I've, I've started listening. It's a fantastic program. Thank you. <laughs> and you've kind of taken the opposite approach of Mike, where Mike was in terrestrial radio. He left terrestrial radio and went to podcasting. You were in podcasting and actually had your show syndicated yes. on AM radio. Um, yeah, WMCK.FM. And um, the Rugged Angel cast is basically, I just find a different woman every week and talk to her. I interview her about, you know, just putting the spotlight on whatever, helping her tell her story. Now, are they Whatever people they local to Pittsburgh, or are they from all over the it's world? Both, yeah. Oh, it okay, started great. off with just, like, all the women that I know and um, all the amazing things that they're doing, and then just kind of, like, spiraled out. And then I've got, like, women from all over the country on, on the roster. This is uh, 104 episodes. As well, as, uh, wow. Congratulations. Over 100. That's a big milestone in the podcasting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> realm. So, And to your right, we have Katie Dudas, who is with the Scare House podcast, to talk about a, a fantastic woman in the world of podcasting. You are in, you're in so many podcasts, actually. You're, you're in Scare Else, and you're also an awesome cast as a regular co-host on that event. And we're going to get through the, the entire panel and talk about why we got into podcasting and how it helps your vision and your goals in life. But uh, welcome to the podcast. Tell me a little bit about Scare House.
just been for Doritos putting one on in the house. But what better, what's better than that? I mean, I got a bunny. I got a killer bunny. <laughs> There's a bunny, actually, for those of you who cannot <laughs> see, maybe from the internet, from the world, from everywhere, we have a bunny from Scarehouse who is terrorizing everyone here at the PodCon. Yes. So, yeah, usually people try to bring people to the event, we try to scare them away. So, Scarehouse Pittsburgh, one of the top ten in the country. An incredible, incredible haunted house. So if you're listening from, from South Africa or wherever, there, there literally was a podcast from South Africa on the stream earlier today. Nice. Now you know you need to take a plane ticket to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and head to Scarehouse. To your right, Corey Nevels, talk about scary B-movies. <laughs> B-movies, from the B-movie bros. Some of the movies, I, I imagine you've, you've got some gems and then you have some, some terrors as well. I mean, that's when you take a look at the definition of a B movie. It can be anything from just something that people find like crazy or outlandish to things that are cheap or fun. And um, so, I mean, we just any kind of movie that we think can fit our bill, we take a look at. We'll do a review of it. We uh, we interview independent filmmakers and we'll uh, invite them on for a uh, thing we like to call B movie chats. We like to describe it like a bar room chat, where we just pick a topic in the film industry and discuss it, and it goes from there to here and everywhere in between. Awesome. And to your right, we have Michael oh. Sorg, the man who invented podcasting. I always say that. <laughs> he, no. he technically no. didn't invent podcasting, but you've been around from, like, the beginning. You're a pioneer in the trade. How long have you been podcasting, Sorg? I started podcasting in January of 2006. We are nearing 13 years of talking about professional wrestling. Wow. I didn't even know what a podcast was until about four years ago. I think, and even then I was kind of fuzzy. And isn't it interesting, because I met you because of professional wrestling initially. We did, and that's a conversation we can have with the audience after <laughs> this show. But you started an entire network. It started with a show, and it grew. It grew, um, yeah, and unfortunately it was I trying to do a network of me doing about five or six or seven or ten shows, uh, and, and now I recruit other people that do awesome stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to go around the, the round again and, and talk about why we podcast. Uh, Mike Sasson, why did you leave Terrestrial Radio? Why did you come to the River's Edge? You, you left Terrestrial Radio. You, you were on the Well, they, they, let's just be honest. They stopped paying me. So okay. um, it wasn't like something where I sat there and went, I'm out of here. I want to work for free. <laughs> no, it was, it ended. So, but I mean, I initially got into podcasting, um, actually at uh, Pittsburgh Podcast Network with uh, the Jim Crenn No Restrictions yes. podcast. And then from there, I went to my second job in terrestrial radio with uh, Jim Crenn on uh, here in Pittsburgh. And then from there, when that um, opportunity ended, I actually was on another show on your network. Yeah, um, Funny Money. Funny Money. And uh, you approached me and said, hey, Mike, if you have any ideas for any shows, we would love to hear from it. And my only idea idea was I want to talk for an hour or two a week about whatever I want to talk about. Um, and I named it the Mike Sasson Show because I'm not very creative. And so I got a producer, uh, Alex Clemens, who is absolutely the star of the show, is absolutely an amazing talent and is the key, in my opinion, to my longevity. We are now going... Uh, it's uh, two, It was two years this uh, July, I think. Uh, we stopped counting. We're in the hundreds yeah. or something like that in terms of podcasting. But uh, basically the reason why I did it was because of a creative outlet. I've always enjoyed um, audio entertainment from, you know, obviously terrestrial radio and then satellite radio and everything like that. And to have a platform where it's no holds barred, it's whatever you feel, not having to worry about the FCC, not having to worry about, you know, having to worry that a, uh, a local car dealership doesn't like what you said or something like that, and, com and being able to bring interesting people on and not having to clear it through a hundred. I mean, this is the guy who I, I'm going to put use air quotes, work for, and you've <laughs> never, ever come up to me and said, hey, Mike, we need to tone down on that. No, never. And that's what's great about podcasting because it is, I, to me, the way I look at it is I, I look at it very similar to the transition that um, television made when it went from broadcast to cable to now even the streaming services. You're seeing that the quality content is moving towards Netflix and Hulu and everything like that. And I think if you listen to audio, if you really truly love audio entertainment like we all do in this room, everything, the talent and 
you know, big names that were established people that could work in, quote unquote, the, the establishment media is moving over to the podcast world for the exact reason why comics eventually moved from The Tonight Show to HBO to Netflix, which is the freedom to say whatever the heck you want, which is why we're all here. And that's why this is going strong. And, you know, we're going to continue to dominate the universe. Do you think uh, terrestrial radio will be around in a few years? It w well, here's the thing. If you listen to terrestrial radio right now, they're already telling their listeners to start listening to their radio stations on their, on their smart speakers. They're already telling them, hey, listen to www, whatever, on the iHeart Media app. Well, when you're telling your people that, then what the heck's the difference between that show and the 20 minutes of commercials and the FCC regulated content to listening to it on our app and the same thing without all of that. And you can always say, hey, Alexa, play the River's Edge station on TuneIn. Same thing and as if it was the same. Yeah. You won't hear the same song more than twice in a 24-hour period. And that's and then again, it, it makes it to where you're not going to hear the same songs. You're not going to hear the same type of talk. You're going to hear different voices. You're going to hear because, I mean, let's be honest, it's not a very diverse lineup on major terrestrial radio. Yeah. <laughs> And the, and, the, and the fact that, you know, the, that on podcasting, you do get several different voices from around the world. Like you said, we listened to someone from South Africa today. If you 20 France, years ago, everywhere. you know, 20 years ago, that would be impossible to hear something. Or you talk about different, you know, different, you know, when was how many professional wrestling radio shows are there? How many shows about, you know, B movies are out there? No, it was always the same type of audio entertainment. So will there be terrestrial radio? There still is an NBC. There still is an ABC, but it's not at the same level as it was yeah. 30 years ago. And you just saw in the Emmys, the winner for best comedy was on Hulu. It wasn't on NBC. And, and I think you're going to see the same thing in terms of podcasting moving forward. Well, you look at this night tonight where we have nearly 30 podcasts right here in Pittsburgh. You mul and we're a mid-sized city, and this doesn't even reflect all of the podcasts in the area. You multiply that by, into a major city and then across the globe. It's incredible. But, Camila, you went on terrestrial radio. Yes. Um, and that, that, that started off kind of randomly. Uh, well, the whole, I don't remember if I approached them or if they approached me, but at, at, at some point I was like, you know what, I want to play music. And, but I don't want to buy the li pay for the licensing. Okay, yeah. for it. <laughs> That's a lot of work oh, to get all that licensing. Yeah, exactly. I know, trust me. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, maybe I can just find someone who will do that for me. And um, I did. And so that was the, that was the stick. You know, and all I played was uh, because my podcast is all about the empowerment and voices of women, all I played was women musicians. Um, that was all the music that I played. And, um, like, do you that think was, was that, that, that there's still a value to terrestrial radio? Do you think it still is important? I mean... Probably on some level, but me personally, I don't really listen to it. Okay. Um, I'm any if I, when I'm in my car or at my desk, all I listen to are either podcasts or my own like Spotify playlist or whatever's on my iTunes. So you know, I mean, there might be some. Uh, there's probably some value to it on a local level. You know, finding out more specifically, like getting in tune with what's going on in your city. But I mean, and if you and also I guess if you don't want to go out and search. For what you're supposed to, what you're supposed to know yeah. about. What's well, going that's on the right thing now. about terrestrial radios. You can literally click the seek button and right. find something. Right. And I feel like apps like TuneIn are allowing that to happen online as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of the modern cars have TuneIn built right into the, right. the radio system. So I feel like online is starting to catch up in that regard. But yeah. you're right. It is easy right now to just turn on the radio and, and let it go. Exactly. So. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, if that's, if that's how you want to roll. Yeah, it's, about training. It's, it's about training the consumer on how to obtain the content. It is. In, in, in building the infrastructure. Yeah, in building the... But, but the funny thing is, if you have Bluetooth in your car and you have a cell phone, you're pretty much already there, but it's putting two and two together. Now, like, like you mentioned, do, I don't listen to terrestrial radio when I'm in my car. Um, I listen to The River's Edge, I listen to podcasting, and, or I put Shuffle on uh, my Google Play or my iTunes or something like that, and so I don't have to listen to 40 minutes of ads per hour, I just listen to the exact content, and, the, and it's, again, it goes back to the same kind of, you know, uh, uh, 
comparison between like, okay, at one point, you got one NFL football game on a Sunday and they decided it for you. But then cable came out and you got multiple and then satellite came out, you got all of them. And now you have a channel that just switches to the good parts. Yeah. And now as a consumer, you learn that that's how you do it. If someone were to take that away, then people would freak. And it's the same thing. I think that right now people, they don't know what is out there, at least, and I think that's changing. I mean, we all, we've all seen the statistics that every year it's exponentially growing and everything like that, but for people that maybe just, again, they go in their car, they turn on the radio, they hit the same you know, call signal they've been doing for 30 years, it's kind of tough to sit there and say there is an alternative, but once you train them that how you get the alternative, there's no going back. I, I think it is going to change. We're all old at this table. Basically, all of us. We're all... Comparatively, trust me. I know. I know. My parents are sitting in the audience, and they're like, "What the hell? Are you, what the heck are you talking about?" We're, we're old. Yes, yes, we're not are. old, but Whatever. but we are. Let me explain. This is the mountain. Let me explain. We still will turn on the radio. We we do the things, but the kids nowadays, they will not touch the radio. And I do this myself. They they pull out the tablet, they pull out the phone, and they'll play internet radio or podcasting through their smart device rather than turn the dial. They've completely abandoned it. Sword. They're not even watching television on television. Right. Yeah, I don't even do that. I watch it on the tablet. Right. It's crazy. I brought my TV from my living room here for over there. I don't think I'm putting it back. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. It's, it's become so accessible. And the, and the quality in the, the screens on the new devices is so great, too, that you really don't need to, to sit there and watch TV at home. So I guess unless you get the, the 4K device. Do these do 4K? But, I don't so, even know. So my television is not ca capable of HDR and 4K, but my iPhone that's streaming this over there is. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. That's wild. Sorg, you've seen everything. You've been there from the beginning. How did, it, how did things start? How did you start podcasting? And well, why did you start podcasting? Because well, no one knew what it was. Well, we I had, didn't know what it was. We had two sticks and a microphone, and, and we kind of just rubbed <laughs> them together until we had a podcast. Um, no, it was, it was infinitely a lot harder. Um, like, we didn't have iPhones. We didn't have anything like that. I believe the goal was to put... It's a podcast. It's an iPod, a thing with a hard drive that spins in your pocket. Somehow that sounds dangerous. Um, but no, we, it, you know, I came from uh, streaming radio, which was also, like, felt like it was gonna, a computer that was going to catch fire in my back room, too. Um, and it was just seemed like the next step. I watched, I watched people like Leo Laporte to go from tech TV to this thing called podcasting, uh, netcasting, and that whole debate we had ten years ago about what to call it. Um, and and it just like, it seemed like the, the 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 next step, right, to create something. Um, I was already making websites about certain music groups um, that uh, that were you know doing community and everything. And I just found this opportunity to like, hey, we're having great conversations amongst our friends about things like pro wrestling, about technology that turned into the awesome cast. Let's record this. Maybe other people will like the thing we're talking about. And and they did, you know. And 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 you know, we just kind of grew it from there. How difficult was it to build an audience? over a decade ago in podcasting because like I said I'm obviously involved in the online media I didn't really understand what a podcast was until uh, just before the River's Edge started I remember when I first started my podcast River Talk it was called the River's Edge at the time I didn't call it a podcast because I still didn't understand what a podcast was I called it online radio so um, there's this thing called MySpace What's uh, that? And you had to learn about all these My codes. Space? And you had to make sure a really co cool song was auto-playing at the time. Um, and, and, and literally, like, <laughs> a lot of the wrestlers were even getting... Hell, I got, I got my rap group booked through MySpace. It was really effective. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the, but the, actually, technically, as long as you weren't a technology podcast, it was really damn easy. You know how many people that are part of the show today says, I went on to Stitcher. When it first started, when it start started, I typed in wrestling, and you were one of the top three. Wow. Yeah, it, it's so um, it was probably easier then because it, you didn't have to no, feed yeah, through now, a ton of podcasts. You want to start a, so back then it was like if you if you were starting podcasts, you were already technology minded, right? So every podcast was, hey, here's your Apple podcast, here's your Mac podcast, here's your Google podcast, here's your Windows Linux podcast, and it just like. 
sec- like that was your, your niches were all that. So like the wild thing we to do was to talk about normal people stuff that didn't have to involve technology or podcasts about podcasts or anything like that. Um, so now obviously it's everything, right? I often say, hey, we can't compete with a Kevin Smith or like, I, what was the one thing somebody's asked me about? Uh, uh, Who's the one in the train wreck that just got a podcast for like a, like a couple million dollars? Amy Schumer, thank you. Um, like, like, I'm not in competition with them. I'm not in competition with Stone Cold Steve Austin's podcast. <laughs> I'm in competition with other fan podcasts that like to talk about this topic the way we talk about this topic. But one thing you've done differently than I think anyone else, and you've done it better than anyone else, is you've created a community within your podcasts. Each one of his podcasts, and this is something that really, for those listening around the world who are looking to get involved with podcasting, one thing that you could learn from Mike, Mike Sorg over there is how to build a community. Each one of your podcasts have groups and people who join the conversation each and every week in a live setting, and often your fans become part of the show. And I think that's something that's really unique, something that I would be terrified of as someone who is a complete control freak and wants to have complete dominion over everything in my show. I could not imagine. I know you you can relate, Mike. uh, And and it's funny you talk about what you're in competition with. In my opinion, one of the great things about podcasting is I don't view any other podcast as kind of a competition because like that kind of is an old terrestrial radio thing in a sense that, okay, the morning show's on from 6 to 10. There's five other morning shows. They're on 6 to 10. You're competing against those five. If someone wants to listen to Stone Cold Steve Austin's and your podcast, yeah. So, I mean, so, I mean, like, I've had people that listen to my podcast or listen to my show live when we broadcast it. I've had it where they listen to it at Tuesday at 9 a.m. on the River's Edge. I've had them where they go ultimately to where we do the clips on our Facebook page. I have it where people will listen to it as where they do a long car trip and they'll listen to four or five in a row. Mm -hmm. And so it's not something to where, okay, if you sit there and say, oh, I listen to the Bill Burr podcast Great. I listen to the Bill Burr podcast as a comedian. You can, and I think that's what's great about this. And it's almost like this idea of having a, a pod, you know, a, a pod crawl, pod, you know, a pod fest, because none of us are, we're, our competition is other forms of media mm-hmm. in trying to get people over here so that people realize that people are listening and that ultimately, if we do want to turn this into a financial, you know, something, we have to then convince people in advertising that, hey, if you want to reach certain people, we're the, we're the place to go, just like, you know, cable at one time had to convince people they were the place to go. Kind of on that, I, I want to I kind of clarify the competition. I, I, I'm not, you know, not competition for day of the week, time of the week. It's like, you know, time, right? Like, yeah. there's only so many hours in the day. I just, I, even the podcasts I listen to regularly, like, I missed having this week because I was busy, right? Um, so that, that's what I mean there. But also, as far as, and I forgot the other point. Oh, you were talking about advertising. I think the other thing we need to think about podcasting, everybody, anybody that comes to me and says, I'm going to start a podcast and we're going to get into advertising. It's like, unless you have something already like scarehouse we work with they have an audience and i always i always tell katie i was like you don't need the release necessarily every day because everybody's going to show up right um but it's a tool for other at other business right um we're looking at certain things we have patreon and we experiment with that but i think like everything has i want to say an ulterior motive but like an alternative way to be successful, then I have enough people looking at this to sell an Audible commercial, right? I think we need to get away from that. Well, and, well, I, I, I mean, think if anybody so knew, true. anybody, it has to be a passion play, and it needs to be something different, something creative, and your goal can be completely different than all those podcasts that are in your list right but now. I, I would agree that you can't them. make the goal of any podcast being making money. I mean, because that's a long trip if you're going to try to take that. But I think that if we're talking about podcasts in general, if we're talking about the end game, then it is something to where, like for instance, like you talk about, I've had advertisers approach me and I have said no because I don't want them to control my content. And ultimately my uh, my show, the end goal is to help people get my it's one of those things of like okay 
do you listen to my podcast because I'm a stand-up comic? Do you listen to my podcast and they'll go see my show? Or do you go see my show when I perform live and then go listen to the podcast? It's kind of working hand-in-hand in terms of, quote-unquote, I guess, building a brand and also just in, in just something fun to do. But I do think that what I, in terms of the financial end of it, it's the where is this technology going to be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and like you answered, will there be terrestrial radio? The one thing that terrestrial radio has over us is a sales force. And that's the difference, is they have people that have been trained to go into people's you know, businesses well, you and be, be able to explain willing. why they should invest. Yeah, I think you need to be willing to look outside of the box, too. People, you talk about Audible. Well, every podcast in the United States, around the world, <laughs> is looking for the Audible sponsorship, the Audible sales. You need to be able to think about out, outside of the box. For example, if I were to like choke on a piece of ice here and die, I would ask you to haul my, uh, my, my body... <laughs> You could tell I'm in podcasting. <laughs> to Han Funeral Home, the only family-owned funeral home in Millville because they specialize in grain burials. That's where you need to go when you look at advertising. You've got local sponsors. You have to look outside of the box. You can't just look to, uh, to the same old, same Give old. Give me something perfect for podca- podcasting. Something like our friends at Slice on Broadway that provide us with the perfect yes. pepperoni pizza. <laughs> For exactly. Pittsburgh podcasters and have for several, several years from one location to four, including PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's a lot of damn peas. That's right. They do a great job. I've had their pizza on Awesome Cast. So, speaking of Awesome Cast, your co host, Katie Duda, Scarehouse Pittsburgh, you are one of those people, and I, I was really interested to talk to you because you are part of a successful organization, you are part of a successful business. You're making your money on the audiences coming to the Scarehouse. And we talked about Sorg and how he has done such a fantastic job of building a community. I feel like what you guys are doing at Scarehouse and the reason why you podcast is to engage that community and keep them involved with Scarehouse all year round. Is that the objective? Am I right in thinking that? You'd be surprised how many are not Okay. Yeah, so people connect to you and then but but people from outside of the the area who start listening and they love to learn about these these people involved in the field and how they do what they do. Do you think it brings them to Pittsburgh? Do you think at the end of the day they may take that plane trip to Pittsburgh to check out Scarehouse because you've built that community? We have. <laughs> and I, I just don't, it's very wild to me for them to come to town because um, they will visit Scarehouse. We have people that travel from across the country to visit our haunted house and they'll say, we found out about you through your podcast, which is one of the coolest things ever because you're just not expecting that. Because you're like, oh, I saw you on Facebook or I saw you here on social media, but like hear the podcast and know our voices is really a neat thing. Like, it is cool. I've run into people who have who've, who've watched my show and come out to different events and it's really cool to meet different people who have seen you. I remember I was at the Carnegie Museum, actually, speaking of, of Snack, who was uh, one of the shows. You can follow them around the world from the Carnegie Science Center. They led today's PodCon. I was listening to their program, and, um, and, and I, I learned about it through the Carnegie Museum system. When I was at the Carnegie Museums, somebody ran into me. They said, oh, you. I said, I know you from somewhere. And it was the pod party. They heard about the pod party, came down, remembered me, ran into them in public. It's crazy how things can, can grow in this podcasting community and you can get your own little fandoms. It, it, it's kind of cool. And I know you're becoming a star because not only are, are you doing Scarehouse and Awesome Cast, but you're doing interviews with wrestlers as well <laughs> and all sorts of things. Did you... S- Short wrestlers. wrestlers. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be my next podcast. Can you stand up for a second? Yeah, like, like Katie is really tall. So I think you're probably out of the camera view. So... Are we, are we listening heights now? Yes, yes. Yeah, Mike here also tall. 
I'm told to. <laughs> so did you start podcasting with Scarehouse first, or did you get introduced to podcasting I through? Well, I, I, okay. I, I think I was wrestling Mayhem, Mayhem Joe first. I drag everybody into that. Yeah. <laughs> so did you convince Scarehouse to get a podcast? No, I, I came on there. I was already established, um, but I kind of pushed them to more of a personality. Okay. Okay. I think it's important to point out that a lot of people that work with Scarehouse, um, Kurt and in the past, including the founder, are old media people that have that idea and, I should probably put a camera on me, uh, and um, like they're, they're always looking for that next thing, right? And they're looking at, along with Katie, um, you know, the Facebook Live and the podcasting and that next way to get your message out. And they buy billboards and news spots and radio spots too. And that, that's always a conversation I know you guys have. Well, I think that you see a lot of that. You see a lot of people who are moving from terrestrial radio to podcasting. Even some nationally syndicated people are now easing back on the radio and, and kind of divvying up their time between radio and podcasting. So I think you do see a lot of, of that change and that shift towards online media. And, and I think that, that it's really interesting to see that. But I, but I think that they can make really good podcasters because, so, so Mike, your, your show's really successful. Camila, you're on terrestrial radio. So were you on radio before you were podcasting or, or were you podcasting first? Um, I was podcasting first. Okay. And, um, so like kind of, I guess, to touch on like the, we spoke about community a little bit here. And the reason why I started even podcasting, it started off as being, just something fun for my husband and I to do um, because he we decided we were going to do like a TV movie review podcast and we did that but you know he's a lawyer so he has he, he gets busy uh -huh. so, and then I moved on to do the Rugged Angel cast where I found there were a lot of women in my life that were doing amazing things and no one had ever wanted to talk to them whether it be in print or on pot or on air or whatever and a lot of them was the first time someone had interviewed them so and it was also a way for me to strengthen the relationships of, with women that I have in my life because I was always kind of like, oh, the guy's girl, whatever. But, you know, you, you grow up and you find out that it's important to have relationships and solid relationships with women. And it's also like, you know, how often do we get to sit and talk with somebody for an hour uninterrupted and undistracted? So it's just like, that's kind of the whole reasoning behind why I even started. And then I'm also repping my other podcast, Revisiting Sunnydale today, where my one of my best friends and I are... We talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, okay, <laughs> so, that's cool. Like, so we're rewatching that, and so like that in itself is just like you know I get to like hang out with my friend for like three hours a week. Like we sit and record like three episodes or whatever. And sometimes you know. that's so important. So you're, you're really a busy person, right? I, I am as well. So with the Rivers Edge, my friend Randy Highland, who co-hosts the Culture Cruise with me, we love to go to museums in the Pittsburgh area, and we go to everything from. The, uh, what I mentioned, the Carnegie, all the way to Bicycle Heaven, to the uh, Baronhof, all sorts of museums, the smallest to the biggest. But I started getting busier and busier in my, per in my life with the radio network and, and work and everything else, and it was becoming more and more difficult to make that happen. So what did we do? We turned it into a podcast, and it's the Culture Cruise, and we're doing what we love, right. having a really fun time doing it. We actually record the show driving to the museum right. and driving back so you could hear... <laughs> It, depending on who's driving, if I'm driving, you get to hear me honking on the horn and yelling at people. <laughs> if Randy's driving, you get to hear me yelling at Randy for not honking on the horn and yelling at people. But it's so much fun, and it's doing what we would have loved to do anyways, exactly. but we're able to turn it into a creative uh, artwork yeah. that... Marcella and I, that's all we like. We do anyway. We just sit around and BS about yeah. pop culture in general whenever we're together. It's like, how about we just throw a microphone on it and you know record it and let, and, and let everybody else in, and then we also get to meet other people that are also into it as well. And, you know, it's, it's just really a fun time. Yeah. And another point, you, you keep on kind of going from podcasting to terrestrial radio or terrestrial radio to podcasting, they're two separate different skills because in terrestrial radio, they train you, okay, you've got 20 seconds, sum it up in 20 seconds, hit the post and get it out of here. It's the same thing in terms of, like I was part of a comedy thing and the whole thing was we had to hit, we had a clock and we had to make sure that we were in break by the 25 of the hour and all this kind of stuff. Whereas in podcasting, just like you said, it's about 
creating a conversation, creating, I mean, it's why if you ever, interviews, it's changed interviews in general. Like it used to be the longest form interview you would ever see would be like a Barbara Walters type 10 minute interview at once every three months. Now their whole interview shows where you get to really learn about somebody and have a long term, like I, on long car trips because of my stand up when I go to different places in the country, I will play podcasts and it's funny because you'll listen to these podcasts with an interview and you really truly feel that after the hour or two or whatever, I know this person. I felt as though I have a connection because anybody can pretend for five or 10 minutes and yeah. just give you the standard. But after 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half, the guard eventually comes down and the real conversation really comes and you truly learn what type of person this guy is, this person is, and that's what makes podcasting such a revolution when it comes to things like interviews. And in terms of, that's why like, and also you talked about like, you know, they gave Amy Schumer millions of dollars to do a podcast. No radio conglomerate, if, some, if she came out and said, hey, I wanna do a morning show and be on in the 50 biggest markets in the country, the big terrestrial radio um, conglomerates would pay her a z billions to do it. But she wouldn't want to do that because, A, now your, your, your time is now, you're on at 6 a.m. and this is everything like that, so freedom happens. And then also on top of that, content, you can't break FCC. Also, the simple fact, like you're talking about different types of people, well, who owns the, the major media? They're gonna sit there and be like, oh, I don't know if we can have her on. I don't know if we can have that person on. I don't know. Well, you realize that we're trying to get to this demographic and you're just like, you're ignoring an entire demographic that needs to be talked to. But again, if it's the same five people that have had the, you know, the, all the media for the last hundred years, controlling it that's why you always hear in the terrestrial radio world them talking about podcasting almost like oh well anybody can set up and do that yeah anybody can set up and do it but the problem is to get an audience you still have to be good still you still good. have to be somebody that can engage an audience and everything like that and that's one thing that b movie bros have done really really well and i'm really excited to see how you guys have grown we've got Corey neville's here just to, to summarize things i'm brian crawford this is Reasons the podcast for International Podcast Day. Mike, Camila, Katie, Corey, and Mike down there at the end. Two mics. So, Corey, B Movie Bros, this started off as a hobby. We're talking about doing things for fun. You love B movies. Your co host, Paul Toronto, he loves B movies as well. You guys, to, you guys decided to start a podcast. And it's really, really cool because. You've gone beyond the Pittsburgh area, and really, even though you're based here in Pittsburgh, if I'm understanding things correctly, most of your audience is actually overseas. Well, actually, we, uh, we just took a look at the statistics on our SoundCloud, because that's how we put everything out there. And um, we've been doing this for three years now. If you're now. smart, you'd use Blueberry. Are, Go ahead. Uh, which, which camera's on? Or, are, Go you, ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we were... Um, <laughs> So we just took a look at our statistics because we've been doing this for three years now. Um, we found out we've had 30,000 listens in the last three years. And wow, the, give them a round of applause. The, um, the majority of our listeners are actually in San Francisco with 16,000 oh, okay. 16, of those listens. Um, the Pittsburgh area, though, we've only had 261 listens over the last three years. Wow. Yeah, we, um, I mean, we've, we've attended horror conventions here done our business cards, had tables, advertised here in Pittsburgh. And for some reason, it just hasn't caught on here. Um, but we looked at our, um, our countries list, and we've been listened to in at least 50 different countries, um, with the lowest listens on the top 50 list being, I think it's like Israel with like 12 listens. Um, the top is the U.S. with like 23,000. Um, and then the U.K. Um, with like 15 or 1,600. Wow. And it was funny because when we first started, we had a lot of interviews with filmmakers from the UK and they thought that we were based somewhere in the UK they were like oh yeah we met you guys somewhere and we're like no you didn't like I've, I've never been to, to, to the Europe. UK yeah um, but yeah it was really funny and um, even even now like a lot of our interviews are overseas are from the UK but a majority of our listeners come from um, the West Coast and I think that if you talk about podcasting which makes it amazing is if you had just focused on, you know, 
your backyard, Western Pennsylvania, you, maybe, you know, again, sometimes you just don't click in a community. But because it's on the in internet and it's worldwide and it can be listened to across, you found the audience, but it wasn't a typical audience that you think a, you know, a movie, a B-movie show based in Western Pennsylvania would get. And that's one of the great things about doing a like you talk about why do a podcast it's like okay maybe you have an interest that maybe your neighbors aren't necessarily interested in uh -huh. you know maybe you live in pittsburgh and you're a huge fan of english premier league soccer well guess what maybe you you want to reach out to people that like english premier league soccer so you find people around the world that are interested in it as opposed to being in pittsburgh where again that's not or maybe someone in the uk is a huge fan of the pittsburgh steelers whatever it's the same kind of thing and that's what's incredible about you know about podcasting, you're nodding in agreement. Everything like that. It's it's crazy too because we learned a lot uh, culturally with like the movie scene over there as opposed to over here. We're over here. We have a lot of movies that are marketed as horror movies, or like the trailers will be shown as horror movies, but they're really not. They're dramas or they're rom coms that somehow try and like put that facade on. Whereas over there, they have the opposite effect, where it's still like culturally not the norm and not accepted for people to like and be into horror. So in a lot of these areas, you know, people will go to the podcast. They will go to lower budget stuff because it's not out there in mainstream, like has become more prevalent here in the last few years. So it's, it's really cool. Um, You've gotten some really prominent guests in your scene. Are people real appreciative of the fact that you exist and you're highlighting their films? Because I know in the B-movie world, they're not getting the same attention as a Hollywood or even a Bollywood film, since we're speaking to an international audience, would get. So that really depends on the filmmaker, you know, the person that's involved in the film. Because we've had a lot of people that have been just excited. You know, we've been their first interviewers. You know, we're getting them out there. And we've had people who've emailed us and been like, hey, I'll do an interview for you guys if you pay us like $20 or $100. And we're like, <laughs> we're like no, we're not making any money doing this. But, uh, but yeah, some people are super appreciative of it. They love it. They're like, thank you for shedding light on the B-movie scene. And there are other people that are just out there like, oh, I can get more money if I, you know, do this. And it's, you know, that we found more often than not, it's people that do just love getting their name out there, love talking to other people that in, are interested in the same thing, love making the movies, love having the conversations, and love just sitting back and watching something that like, a lot of people would consider a guilty pleasure, but is pleasurable nonetheless. That's actually like one of the things that I have, I have found like in like the, I guess three years I've been doing this three four years that now I'm starting to get I'm starting to get like people coming like hey you know I'm getting emails from PR reps I'm like you know I have a client who's got a book yeah. coming out you know I w I w would you like to have her on the show you know I've got someone coming here a filmmaker blah 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 would you like to have her on the show and I'm like great I don't have to pound the pavement as much anymore to try to find guests isn't that so cool because <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's a thing where and I've always been really. I've always really stressed that the River's Edge is, is a, you know, it, I know it's a legitimate organization, other people do, but, but some of the older crowd, they don't understand online media, and you have to always fight that battle that, right. you know, you are as important to the fabric of, of the media world as old man radio, right. and it's, it means so much to me when people start connecting to you. I remember I almost had the guy who runs Candid Camera on my show. He had to cancel last minute, didn't end up in Pittsburgh, but he reached out to me and asked to come on my show, Candid Camera, which actually started out as Candid Radio before TV even existed. They were one of the first TV shows to exist, and they came to me and asked to come on my network. And, and I really, I feel, makes you feel like you're really accomplishing something special when someone comes out, and especially when you started it out from nothing. You know, I don't know uh, how, did, how you started, but the River's Edge started out as a podcast in a closet in a dingy attic with <laughs> yeah, nails coming out of the wall, hangers. It's basically still where I am, but I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> but, you know, I, I've upgraded my microphones a couple times. And there we my, go. And my <laughs> mixer. Um, and, you know, I've gotten a little more tuned to my, my audio editing. But, yeah, it's, I mean, it's basically it. You know, yeah. I started off as like, like, how cheap can I get away with doing this? Yeah. Like, the first year was like 50 <laughs> bucks. All right, boom, let's do it. And now it's just like, you know, I've, I've invested a little bit more. But, again, it's like... I'm not looking for like a big financial return from this. I'm more interested in like the people that I'm meeting along the way. Mm -hmm. And it, as a person that was in terrestrial radio, I've been at meetup events 
and things that they put together and have had a sea of just empty tables. Not because he's here, but I mean, the Millvale Music Festival, you know, Millvale Days, this, I mean, w the River's Edge, when we put together something, I'm always floored by the number of people that come out and the number of people that know you and know the River's Edge and know the Mike Sasson show and know all that kind of stuff. Because I really truly believe that podcasting has a unique way of connecting and making a community out of an audience as opposed to other media to where there seems to be a disconnect. And I think that sometimes, like, I always felt that in kind of old man radio, they were very, very adamant that you were not supposed to sound like a human being. You're supposed to, hi, this is Tommy Tomorrow, with blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and, and again, that is supposed to make it seem like that you could, you know, be something better than you are. And you're supposed to make up a name, and you're supposed to sound perfect. And if you, if you stumble once, people go, ah, oh, you, know, you know, people have to go to the program director's office and listen to it again and all that kind of stuff. But the thing about podcasting, because you hear us warts and all, it is something to where you go, like, I know this person. If there's one thing that's always been, you know, kind of a, a kind of a shock with me is when people will come up to me and after listening to my podcast and listening to my conversations with me and my co-host and producer Alex Clemens, is they'll always come up to me and not like, hey, my great, like I'm a god, but like, get like, hey, Mike, I was having that conversation too one time there, and I'm just like, oh you listen to that? <laughs> and I think that's the difference between podcasting and the old man radio. And the old man radio, it's, hey, this guy's perfect. And we're like, no, we're not perfect. Yeah. We're, this is a community kind there, of deal. There, there's, there's a show. Uh, so that's one of the things that attracted me was the, like, it, 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 was, it wasn't polished, right? And, and, that, and when I hear a podcast that has a little bit too much polish and, you know, good in, you know, rated engineer and everything, it's just like, oh, that's too perfect, right? But there's, um, you, you mentioned about the conversations. Um, uh, our friends that have a table back there, uh, Bold, Bold Sports uh, with Bold Pittsburgh, um, they started their cast, and I'm, I'm not in sports. I, I often say I don't watch sports that aren't, don't admit that they're predetermined. Um, and, uh, and they started their, their thing, and I, I listened to the first few to see if it was something viable, and I'm just like, this is a conversation that I would hear in a Pittsburgh bar, in a good way. Yeah. We'll make that, it's, and I'm just like, this has appeal. People are going to feel like they know these guys, and, and they're, they've been getting like, a great reaction out of it. And, and it's good. Go, P P Bull Pittsburgh Sports, go look it up. And I think one of the biggest advantages that podcasts have over that terrestrial radio is when you're looking for a podcast, you know what you want to listen to. You know what you're looking for, and you're not limited to just what they're talking about. You know, you don't have to tune in, like you said, you know, 9 a.m. Monday morning to find out who's calling who to, you know, admit that they've been cheating or whatever yeah. in the morning. Um, if you want to listen to, you know, commentary on puppies being born, you know, you can find that in a podcast, I'm sure, Where? somewhere out there. Where can I find that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's your next one. Yeah. I'm looking that up. I want to see if it's out there. So uh, Sorg also mentioned Bold Sports. Talk about creating a community. They also run an online blog, too, at boldpittsburgh.com. So they've got that same community built in, uh, which I think is so important in podcasting and into the success of podcasting, too. And really, I, I, I know I, I go back to you, Sorg, but I feel like you're kind of the pioneer in building that kind of community aspect of podcasting, which is so important. Um, I want to point out that most of my cues about community I got from the Twit Network. Um, from but, the what network? But, it was, but the, the This Week in Tech Network. Oh, okay. Like a lot of it, because again, they're the ones that was like, okay, they're on to something here. But again, it was all technology. It was like, where do we apply this otherwise? When we started, we were already doing streaming radio with an AOL chat room. And we brought that over to podcasting when we started. Basically, before there was Facebook Live, we did it on a shoutcast server, right? Um, and so, but, but no, I, I, you know, it's always been there. I mean, it was just, we were applying different media than people were yet because we didn't have all the streaming media and the Facebook yeah. and everything like that. So it was, you know, it's a little bit of, it, it, it was just a little bit of, um, ride, riding the technology tide. Like it got to, a, like got to like 2010 and it was just like, oh, we should stream this. Uh, you, YouTube lets us stream now. We should probably stream this. You know, how do we do this? I'm pointing cameras at like other monitors to bring people in from Texas and Poughkeepsie, New York on Skype, you know, things like that. 
Yeah, it, it's crazy. In the community, I, I'm not much of a gamer, but I did play one game. It was called Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. And the reason why I was so into it was the MSN Gaming Zone. And it was the community that came about through the chat room that kept me coming back and wanting to play more. Real quick, we're going to end today's program with a great song from Nick Graybill, who is with the River's Edge Radio Network, because we we're all local music. Uh, the River's Edge, as well as Sorgatron Media, are the people who brought you this discussion panel and this PodCon event for the people who are here locally in Pittsburgh. But real quick, in 30 seconds or less, we're going to go down the discussion panel. What does podcasting mean to you, and why do you think you're going to continue in the coming years? It means to me uh, freedom and the ability to connect with people that are interested in the same thing that I'm interested in and building an audience and building a brand uh, basically s focused on comedy and my comic talent. And plug your show too. And what? Plug your show as well. My show is The Mike Sasson Show. You can listen to it on The River's Edge Tuesday at 9 a.m. Or you can listen to us on Google Play, iTunes, or SoundCloud. Or you can uh, listen to us on the TuneIn Radio app. Again, that's Mike Sasson, The Mike Sasson Show. Thank you. God bless America. Mila. Uh, let's see. Um, podcasts mean, podcasting means to me community and a chance for me to geek out with my friends about just about whatever it is we're into. Um, and you can... Uh, you can find me, the Rugged Angel cast, also Revisiting Sunnydale, and Down to Watch. They can all be found on Libsyn, um, iTunes, Player FM, iHeartRadio, and wow. Podbean. And um, Rugged Angel is one word, or you could just go to ruggedangel.com, and it'll take you to where you're going to need to go. So basically, you can accidentally f run into you can basically just trip. It's just, you're just like roaming yeah. around on the internet, and you'll trip over I thought we were everywhere. <laughs> that's, that's always one thing that upset. Is someone's like, hey, you know, how do I listen to your show? How do you not listen to our shows? <laughs> we're on every available media on the planet Earth. You leg legitimately, you open up your phone. Trust me, you'll find us. Yes, it's there. <laughs> Katie. Podcasting is, it's a release, it's an escape, and it's about friendship. Um, Paul and I both have jobs which a lot of people would call high stress, um, and it's our way to get away from that. It's our way to release um, that tension, that frustration from throughout the days, and uh, it's an escape. It's a way for us to get together and keep that friendship strong and talk about what we love, um, and you can find us at bmoviebros.com, all one word, um, or on Facebook, B -Movie, uh, backslash bmoviebros. Um, we're on SoundCloud, iTunes, um, I think that's it. Um, we have a Twitter account, at the Movie Bros, or Paul himself has at the Movie Paul. And uh, I just have to say, you know, we review movies to test our abilities. Sometimes we give a topic, but maybe it's good. <laughs> um, podcasting is everything to me because, because I wouldn't be doing the majority of things I am today. Podcast has opened doors for me, has led to me working for myself, has uh, helped me get through depression, has helped me, um, thanks to podcasting, I have seen half the country in the last few years. Wow. And I go to those towns and find people that listen to our shows and get to go have lunch That's with them. That's so cool. When I can go to LA and have lunch with Alex Cars out there. Alex Cars Media and Design, by the way, go check him out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that is a cool feeling, right? And, and those are all because of the podcast, the Mayhem Show, the PodCamp Pittsburgh's for 11 years we did that. You know, I mean, that is amazing. And uh, it's really cool that uh, I didn't imagine in like 2006 that I'd be sitting in a room um, with all these people talking about podcasting still uh, and, and, and a nice rub, a, a, a room that had a wrestling ring in it right there last night. So like that, just to bring it full circle. So Very cool. Yeah, I, I similarly un understand where you're coming from, Sorg. I am moderately good at a lot of different things, but not good enough to be successful at any of them. I'm a good writer, but I don't have the attention span to write a we book. You need to work on your self-image. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested in politics, but I can't stand the 
culture that surrounds politics and the backstabbing and, and everything that, that's involved with that. Uh, I don't know, I'm good at planning events, but uh, basically everything that I'm kind of good at can come together in one form, and that is online radio and podcasting. And every little thing that I, that I find value in in my life, I can bring to one place and make it work and really be who I truly am and just, uh, just put it out all out there. I can write, I can have fun, I can be creative in a way that works for me. That's way more than 30 seconds. That is. <laughs> And because of that, I got to roll right to Nick Rabiel. Mike, Camila, Katie, Corey, Mike, Sorg, there at the end. I'm Brian Crawford. This has been Reasons the Podcast for International Podcast Day right here at Spirit Lounge in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Got Nick Rabiel wrapping things up for us right now, right here on stage. Also a member of the River's Edge. Thank you guys so much for listening. 